comes from Psalm 34, one of those songs or psalms from King David. And so we hear these words from the 34th chapter, verses 1 through 3. Hear God's holy word for us this day. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And then our New Testament reading comes from um, Peter's or letter to Peter, um, the first one. So 1 Peter. In the first chapter, reading verses 15 through 21. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, <coughs> but with the precious blood of Christ, <coughs> a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake. Through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him, and so your faith and hope are in God. God's holy word for us this day. So as we took a look at um, the first verse of the Lord's Prayer last week, you might recall um, this picture from um, Richard Jesse Watson's book, The Lord's Prayer, as we um, begin that prayer, Our Father Who Art in Heaven, and the second page for today is, then hallowed be thy name. And as you focus on that image, perhaps for today, I invite you to think about your own name, being called by name, and even perhaps um, when you have been involved with naming a child, um, perhaps um, an infant, and perhaps even the trial of figuring out what name to choose as a parent, or a grandparent receiving the news of the name for a grandchild, um, and or just um, what is wrapped up in our name. As we know, some are named for family members. Some are given a mother's middle name, as a middle name given their mother's maiden name. What is it that we hold so sacred in the process of naming and in the names themselves? Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In its original form, the Lord's Prayer probably comes from the earthly Jesus himself and calls upon God to make our Creator's holiness manifest to the world. The unique thing about the Lord's Prayer is that across denominations, even borders of countries, one can find some version of this common family prayer. Sharing worship in care centers or 
praying with the elderly, particularly persons with dementia, when we might wonder how much is actually being grasped or how aware they might be until we say the words of the Lord's Prayer. The words are there, and they seem comforting, something the individual can hold on to, a memory that cannot be shaken, a familiar ritual that helps bring us all into the presence of God. This morning, we're considering the first petition of the Lord's Prayer, Hallowed Be Thy Name, as it follows the address, Our Father, the One in Heaven. In John's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 28, Jesus prays publicly, Father, glorify your name. Then a voice thunders from heaven, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. We hear that from Psalm 34 as well, David's song or prayer. It is David giving praise for the Lord's deliverance in answer to prayer. The first three verses that we read are his commitment to continual praise of the Lord. Give the Lord all the praise and we all together as God's people will exalt God's name together. The name of the Lord is the manifestation of God's character, the name by which God wished to be known and worshipped in Israel, the name that expressed God's character as the dependable and faithful God who desires the full trust of the people, the God who is I am. The name of the Lord has no separate existence apart from God and is synonymous with Lord our God. The Hebrew for the Lord is Yahweh and means I am. Yahweh represents the glory and greatness of the Creator as well as the fact that while there was fear, Yahweh was accessible to the people of God. The Jerusalem temple was the earthly residence of God's name among the Israelites, and the people could pray to God by calling on his name. The name of the Lord protects. The Lord saves by his name. And God's saving acts testify of the presence and the trust in the Lord's name. Hope is in the God's name. David sings the praises of, and we rejoice in God's name. Both the love and the fear that belong to God alone are similarly directed towards the name of God. Then there is the word hallowed, hallowed, meaning to make holy or to set apart. In the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is used with the primary meaning of separation or setting apart. But in its various forms, the word is also translated as holy. Holiness, consecrated, sanctified, dedicated, or pure. A hollowed thing was something set apart for a special use or purpose, such as gifts that the Israelites dedicated to God. To hallow persons or things was to remove them from the realm of ordinary labor or make them sacred, such as the consecration of Aaron's sons as priests. Associated with the word hollow was the concept of being set aside for special use and a sense of respect and reverence. Clearly seen in the term hollowed. Hollowed also means to be sound, fit, or whole. To make special, to be perfect, 
free from defilement or uncontaminated. And it means to have a different quality of being, to be extraordinary, set apart. God is separated from us in that Yahweh is perfect and our Creator ruling over the created. This petition could be translated, may your name be held holy. In other words, may you be revered and respected because of who you are. May God's character and reputation be honored and kept untarnished. May nothing dishonor or demean the Lord our God. To hollow God's name is to recognize, regard, respect, give reverence, profess and proclaim God as holy. We don't add to God's holiness through prayer. We treat God as holy. And although we have free access to God, when we take advantage of God's open door policy, we still speak with reverence. Hallowed be thy name balances out our Father. In these two phrases, we see both our close, intimate relationship to God and the reverent honor we owe our Father God, the one in heaven. We need to set God apart from everything that is common and disrespectful and give God the holiness, the place deserved in our lives. We need to be conscious of God's presence, and then strive to do everything for God's glory. Martin Luther posed a question in his catechism, how is God's name hallowed among us? And the answer, when both our doctrine and our life are godly and Christian. Jewish worshipers regarded the name of God as utterly sacred. So much so that when scribes copied scripture, they would use a new quill each time to write the holy name. It was considered irreverent to speak God's name aloud in the Old Testament times. The reason there are many names for God in the Bible. Religious leaders took two names, Adonai, which means the Lord God, and Yahweh, I am, which God gave to Moses, and they took the vowels of the first and the consonants of the second and came up with Jehovah, a made-up word, one that they felt they could speak without offending the holiness of God. Peter also writes in the first chapter, but just as God who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. To be holy is to be set apart. Separated from sin and impurity and set apart to God. <clears throat> the complete moral perfection of God whose eyes are too pure to look with favor on evil should move his people to strive for moral purity. Reverent fear. Not terror but wholesome reverence and respect for God, which is the basis for all godly living. Do we truly understand what it means to revere the Lord? The spiritual, one of my favorites, were you there when they crucified my Lord, captures a sense of the holy. Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. We are struck and overwhelmed by the awesome majesty of God. By starting with God's holiness in the Lord's Prayer, we recognize that prayer is not primarily for our benefit. People today love to have their names highly regarded. Many people want to see their name in lights, on plaques, awards, and in headlines. They are seeking fame and fortune. 
To this attitude, David responds, Glorify the Lord with me and let us exalt Jehovah's name together. And when Moses appeared before the burning bush, he heard the voice of God and removed his sandals to signify that he was standing on sacred or holy ground. This was an act of humility before a holy God. When Isaiah saw a vision of the majesty of God, he cried out in fear, realizing that he was unworthy to appear before the Lord. At that moment, he understood who God was and who he himself was, a humble, imperfect servant. For the disciples, Halloween, or setting apart God's name, expresses God being full of glory and majesty, but not removed from earthly space and the human experience. Being taught to pray our Father, not Jesus' Father or your Father, but our Father, the one in heaven, hallowed be thy name, meant the disciples recognized God's holiness and heavenliness, God's differentness. Prayer springs from the recognition of God's presence among us, where even two or three are gathered in Jesus' name. Hallowed be thy name is in some respects the most difficult to understand within the Lord's Prayer. Name, of course, is simply a way of referring to God. The problem is in the verb be. Hollow it, be thy name. In most English versions of the Bible, it is confusing to know whether the expre it, this expresses a wish or a hope or is it simply a polite way of expressing an indirect command? In Greek, however, it is much clearer. Matthew and Luke both use the indirect command. Let your name be sanctified. Be holy. This command should be taken as a direct and strong petition or demand. So now we see the petition is addressed to God, and that the verb be is a direct command. But it is still unclear whether God or humans are to sanctify or to make holy God's name. Exploring the Old Testament text helps. Leviticus 11, verses 44 and 45 say, I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves and be holy, because I am holy. I am the Lord who brought you up out of Egypt to be your God. Therefore, be holy, because I am holy. God's people, the Israelites, were to be totally consecrated to God. Their holiness was to be expressed in every aspect of life, to the extent that all of life had a certain ceremonial quality because of who God is and what the Lord has done, the people must dedicate themselves fully to the Lord. When God's holiness is spoken of in the Bible, reference is to God's incomparably awesome majesty the mysterious, overwhelming presence of God's infinite power, before which the whole creation trembles, and God's absolute moral virtue, a presence so infinitely pure and perfect, unlike us, human mortals. So here, the people of God are holy, because their God is holy. Yet there still is a distinct difference in our holiness and the holiness, the greatness, the awesomeness of our God. Our holiness comes from the regard and reverence that we hold 
as we fully dedicate ourselves to our Father. Scholars suggest that when God is assumed subject of the action, holy be thy name, the reverence should then be raised to God. The following petition, our phrase of the prayer for next week, also helps clarify this with, let your kingdom come. We cannot build the kingdom of God on earth because even our best efforts towards peace, justice, and community are compromised by sin. Only God can bring the ultimate transformation that includes the radical annulment of sin. If the petition, let your kingdom come, urges God to establish sovereignty and rule over the earth, it is probable that let your name be holy is aimed towards the holiness of God and that rule and sovereignty as well. In more direct language, it could be sanctify your name. God is already holy. So the prayer is not that God be made holy, but that God be regarded as holy. God's saving purposes in the world is where that holiness is displayed before the eyes of the world's people and acknowledged by them, which will happen only as God's kingdom comes. Last Sunday, we discovered that the pattern for prayer Jesus gave us has six separate ingredients. An easy way to remember them is to think of the six letters in the name of the author of the prayer, Christ. The C, you might remember, represents concentrate from last Sunday. Concentrate on the one you are praying to, our Father who art in heaven. The first guideline Jesus gives us for the prayer is to concentrate. Concentrate on the one who is willing and eager to talk to us, who loves us, and whom we can call Father, and who wants to give us everything, absolutely everything we need. Today, the second letter, H, is for hallelujah. Hallelujah in Hebrew means, let us praise the Lord, found throughout the Psalms, used 23 times to open or close a psalm with praise and joy. Well known to the Jews as a cry for joy. Hallelujah, interestingly enough, is also the word right before hallow in the Bible Dictionary. Jesus teaches, hallowed be thy name, meaning holy be thy name. Hallowed defines the person of God, and to this ultimate holy one, we respond with glory, hallelujah. At this point in our prayer, we could say praise, glory, and hallelujah as we are driving down the highway, in the shower, in our quiet times, or in corporate worship. We find ways to express that God is holy and wonderful, saying, glory, hallelujah. Saying hallelujah is hallowing, setting aside praise and glory for God's name. This affirmation, hallowed be thy name, to our Father who art in heaven, reflects the many prayers of King David, who declared the majesty and holiness of God before he made any prayer requests. We see in most biblical prayers, worship prior to petition. Prayer begins with God and God's priorities. It has been said that the first petition of the Lord's Prayer is the indispensable foundation for all the rest. It clarifies to whom we are praying 
our Father, the one in heaven, and then gives glory, praise, and hallelujah in honor of the holiness, the sovereignty of our God, by setting aside with reverence and respect the name of our most holy God. May it always be so. Amen.